If you follow today's tutorial, you'll learn how to create this flat illustration in just a few steps using Adobe Illustrator. My name is Cosmin and I'll walk you through the entire process. Let's start with the inspiration. The inspiration today came from Dribble. I saw this really cool illustration done by Storytel. There's a series of illustrations that, that are called Blatter. This is not sponsored or anything. I really like their illustrations. So I took a look over what they got and they do have a couple of illustrations in the same style. So I thought it would be amazing to actually teach you guys how to create create an illustration like this. So we'll start with this as the main inspiration. First off, we need not just this inspiration, but we also need the subject. I just finished watching The Last Dance on Netflix. That's a series about Michael Jordan. So we'll use Michael Jordan as, <laughs> as the inspiration for today's uh, illustration and actually create something in this style with the Michael Jordan theme. So for that, let's go to Google and we'll need Michael Jordan running or something. So I'll type just that. Let's go to images and just browse a couple of these pictures. This picture is pretty funny. Yeah, so let's let's take this picture for inspiration. I feel like this is an amazing reference. Okay, I'm going to take a screenshot. Maybe not include that guy because we don't need him. And then fire up Illustrator, where we'll create a new document, 1600 by 1200. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, I can include the final vector files with all of the references and everything that we've talked about in the description of this video. Now that we're in Illustrator, I'm going to drag the reference images over here so I can <laughs> I can actually have a better look at them. But first we need to break down what makes this illustration so great. So I'm going to take a look at it and try to identify whatever makes it stand out. The first thing that stands out is the fact that it has a character that uses very simple shapes and a black fill. Then the torso is missing. So I don't know, this is the torso these are the legs there's nothing connecting them the third thing is that there's a random shape in the background that's colored and it also has irregular paths and the last step is that you have these white stroked details to kind of show characteristics of the character so we're going to use that as the blueprint to actually create this illustration for the first thing i'm going to take the pen tool select a black fill and then an empty stroke and start with the head so i'm going to use this as reference to actually to actually trace the head Again, you need to simplify it as much as possible because this isn't uh, a real character. As you can see in the actual illustrations, the head is kind of flattened. So I'm going to try to adjust that as well. Okay, so we're going to use this as the head and now we need the body, the hands. You can play a lot with a forced perspective. So as you can see, it's it can be a stroked outline that's very big. So I'm going to try to follow that one, but actually, actually make some changes to it. So take the pen tool from here. Let's swap the fill and the swatch and increase it to maybe some like 20 and we'll see how that looks. So we're going to start from over here. Let's have an elbow, another elbow, and then maybe have it continue like this. But as you can see, it's not uh, big enough. This needs to be way bigger so i'll hit 60. now maybe this is too, too big so maybe 50. yeah let's start with 50 and we'll go from there now we need to create a torso as you can see it's kind of like a rounded shape so we'll create that we'll use this as the base this is way too big we need to readjust it with the direct selection tool i'm going to make a couple of changes also it looks like at the joints you have around the joints so in front of the stroke panel make sure to have a rounded cap and around the joint. If you want to play with some perspectives, you can use the width tool. So take that, try to find anchors, and from then you can actually drag it. So this would this would give you the impression of force perspective. I'm going to do it uh, on the ends. That way you can have more interesting looks. And we need to create a hand. As you can see, the hand usually has three, four fingers. So I'm going to create just that using the pen tool. I'm going to create the first thumb but we need to make it smaller maybe something like 20 then have the second one because he's playing basketball his hands are way bigger than usual <laughs> with the direct selection tool you can make small adjustments okay so maybe it's missing one so i'm going to add one more just because i would like to make it uh, something different than what you have in this illustration the perspective is a bit too much so i need to make small adjustments what i mean by too much i mean that it stands out so whenever i see something stand standing out i'm trying to make small adjustments so because he's playing basketball of course he's going to need a ball but first we need to duplicate this hand because i would like to use it over here as well so with it selected hold down the alt key and make a copy let's try to place it this one is a bit smaller 
So with the Alt and Shift key, I'm going to actually make it smaller, scale it down and let's make this 15. I'm going to try to have this thumb go over like this and actually connect over here and do small adjustments on the sides as well. Just because I wanted to have some kind of continuity and I look exactly the same as this, this hand. Okay, so now we have the torso. Now we're going to have to work on the actual legs. For the legs, I'm going to do the same thing. Let's start with this one. Actually, I can see that the profile has been changed it's custom so i'm going to start with this but actually modify it so take the pen tool and create the legs let's do this leg like so have it continue from over here this looks uh, a bit too dull right now so i'm going to try to figure out how i can make it more dynamic by by switching things up so by changes changing the the positioning of some of these anchor points. I can see that at the end of the pants, usually you have this cutoff point. There's no way to actually do it from the stroke. We're going to actually have to mask it or cut it down with another shape. But first, let's give it some perspective. So again, I'm taking the width tool. Let's make it bigger over here and even bigger over here. This one at the end needs to be a bit bigger. Where you have seen that pad, that's where we're actually going to probably cut it off. The way we're going to do that is using the pen tool. Let's swap this out and have a white film to see how this looks. Uh, start drawing to see how this pad will actually look like once it's being masked. Do the same thing here at the end. And again, I'm using this as a reference for this <laughs> front foot. Uh, so I'm trying to have the pants be a bit lifted. And what we need, we need an actual pair of maybe Jordans, not golf shoes. Try to make something like it, but again, a very simplified version of it. So start from here. And we'll add some details later. Maybe bring this in a bit just to have kind of like a weirder shape to work with. And also where he stands, I would like to add a shadow. This is not something I'm seeing in these illustrations, but I would definitely want to. So maybe let's create a shape like this. That's a shadow. And also I'll, I'll create one for the back as well and make a copy and then hit the mirror tool over here is the reflect tool place a point over here and while holding down shift key you can actually make a copy switch that around we need to bring this a bit here because this is where we'll have the actual shoe i'll make a copy by holding down the alt key we need to make it definitely smaller because that leg is smaller and this is way too close over here so i would like it for the shadow to be more like this cool so right now we pretty much have the base of the illustration let's move it more in the center and one thing that i want to do is actually cut these points off to do that i'm going to select everything go to object hit expand all of these pads have been expanded and with the white fill this one and this shape selected while holding down shift key go to window pathfinder and hit merge you could also use the shape builder tool but i like this method better and then double click to enter the group and remove the white parts okay so we have two of the points that we were talking about we have the character and we have the character mid section missing so the body is actually disjointed now i would like to have a random shape behind everything but instead of having maybe just a random pattern i would like to maybe have something more in this theme of michael jordan and the chicago bulls so i'm going to search for the chicago bulls logo and we're going to use that as the shape behind everything we're going to have this as reference let's copy this image with command v i'm going to paste it in and the way i'm going to do it so because i want to have these irregular paths i'm going to use actually the pencil tool it's behind the shaper tool over here let's double click and make sure that the smoothness is either in the middle or towards more the accurate side just because we want to keep those jagged lines and now i'm going to trace this particular element so i'm going to do the horns the face and then the ears when you're doing this try to be as loose as possible so as you can see these pads are really jagged that's the stylistic choice do the same thing for the other horn as well i'm actually doing this on a mouse pad so i don't have a mouse um, all of the illustrations you're seeing <laughs> on my channel are done with a mouse pad on an apple macbook so it's pretty easy to actually not be accurate with it if it was a mouse i think it would have been a bit harder to have uh, these jagged lines look kind of like a drawing now let's move this out of the way and try to try to select what we have and with the eyedropper tool i'll actually sample the same color scale it up by holding down the alt and shift key at the same time and send it behind 
I think this looks pretty cool. We need to make this smaller just because it's way too close to the edge over there. Let's move everything a bit down. I would also like to have a basketball. Uh, I forgot about that so I'm going to use that as a sample and with the lip tool I'll draw a perfect circle. I'm trying to find out what works with this composition. One good thing to do is just to try things out and then re recompose. I like the w way it's placed over here just because he's looking forward to it but I think this is a better place but at the same time I don't want it to take away too much from the horn. And now the last step is to actually have the white stripes on the character to, to give it some, some personality. So I'm going to start with the ball, um, taking the pen tool, having an empty feel and a white stroke and I'm going to try to create some detailing over here. From what I saw in this actual illustration is that it actually tapers off so let's do just that i'm going to select uh, from the uniform profile you can actually select this one which is a variable width profile and actually make it a bit bigger and do the same thing for for the other elements as well so th this is a very minimalistic uh, basketball but i'm trying to do the same thing as i did for the other stroke let's select it have it two points and then have it variable for the actual character i'm going to use this is reference, so I'm going to create kind of like a v-neck. Maybe for the arms over here, create a quick shape. Also where they have elements overlapping. I saw in the illustration reference that they usually have a stroked outline. So I'm going to do just that. Select all of these, make it two points, make it variable. For the pants, the only <laughs> thing I'm going to add is over here, uh, some kind of separation. But for this case, I'm actually going to use this width profile. And for the shoes, we definitely need to have the, the Nike logo over there. So this is my, my best shot at actually creating the Nike logo with the pen tool. I would buy that. I would buy these shoes for sure. Let's make it two points and actually have it variable as well. Now, maybe for, for this one, not have it variable. Yeah, just have that variation. In the reference, the shoes actually have some kind of separation for the sole. Let's have it this profile and now we need to bring the logo a bit higher up and do the same thing over here but the logo will be a bit smaller because I'm imagining it just like a quick look on the inside of the shoe and we also need a separator for the sole here. Of course if you want to add more details to make it a bit more interesting let's take a look over what Storytel is doing so they do have small elements that are decorative that could help tell the story so maybe we're going to try and create something like this imagine that he's on a court and create some some random stars these stars would be the flashes of film cameras because that's the era this took place in make it smaller and then make a couple duplicates and actually scale them so if you follow the steps of this tutorial, you should end up with something like this. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video so more people could see it and subscribe for more. See you in the next one. Bye.